So check out my a7 IV cinema rig. You can pretty much do this with the a7S III or the FX3 as well, or the Alpha 1 if you've got the Alpha 1. But uh, this thing is an absolute beast. Atomos Ninja 5, you can record RAW. a7 IV, you can't record RAW, but you can record ProRes if you really wanted to have an external drive on the top. But we're getting off topic already. We've only just started the video, we're getting off topic. But uh, we're gonna be talking about this cinema lens right here, the 16 millimeter T2.5 by Makey. Now, I've got the 24, the 50, and the 105 as well. And I want to explain the reasons why you have different focal lengths, what they're for. But the 16 millimeter one is one that I've been looking for for quite some time. And I know a lot of cinematographers out there love their establishing shots. And I know a lot of music video people love wide angle lenses as well. It's a very creative lens, but uh, I don't really wanna talk about this full cage setup. I'm gonna be breaking this down in a whole nother video, but there is a few key features why you should be investing in cinema lenses. And we really need to up the hype on cinema lenses because they're just phenomenal. Autofocus is incredibly good these days, too good. And uh, sometimes you don't want autofocus. Videographers and cinematographers want to take charge of their focus. First ACs obviously won't have a job because they essentially pull focus and uh, yeah they won't have a job but being creative with focus is a whole nother skill on its own and it can just create a different vibe i did just shoot a sports commercial full manual focus and you know it pops in and out of focus sometimes because i set the focusing distance and then i pretty much ran close to the actor and it turned out absolutely incredible because i love how it doesn't just always keep focus it's kind of boring when it keeps focus all the time but uh yeah Let's dive deeper into this lens. What's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. That would be absolutely amazing. Now this is the fourth lens that I've gotten from Makey. And uh, this is probably one of my favorites. Now this one I really needed because the 24 mil was the widest lens that I actually had on. I'm actually filming on the G Master 20 mil lens right now. And uh, 24 mil, sometimes just isn't wide. Specifically paired with my a7 IV, if you do put it into slow motion, you've got that crop factor, that 1.5 times crop, and it makes it even closer, even tighter. It's like a 35 mil, whereas a 16 mil, well, 16 mil is right here, whereas this 16 mil, if you put it into that 1.5 times crop, then you know you have got a very similar 24 focal length, which is really good for wide shots, establishing shots, good for real estate videography as well. But we all know 24 mil by itself in full frame isn't really wide for establishing shots. 16 millimeters just gives you that whole another level. Now, firstly, why cinema lenses? Why should we be investing in cinema lenses? Because they're fully manual and, uh, you know, you can get autofocus lenses and they're full autofocus. You point the camera, you shoot, you press record, and you're done. You don't have to worry about all these little bits and pieces and focus motors and all those kind of things. But uh, that's the thing about cinematography is that you want to be in full, I'm gonna put this down. You want to be in full control of your focus. Now that can make a big difference. Sometimes when it pops in and out of focus, really depends on the situation, but when it comes to like sports videography, it pops in and out of focus. It actually looks more natural. It gives it a little bit more intensity. And if it's 100% in focus the whole time, you kind of sometimes lose that intensity. And uh, I mean, it's purely subjective. It's up to you. It is a creative style. Sometimes you miss focus because you've set focus and you're trying to keep that same distance away from the subject and you kind of pop in and out of focus but it really, like I said, depends on that shooting style. But the biggest reasons why you actually want to be getting a cinema lens is actually the T-stop value. So this is a T2.1, the 16 millimeter is a T2.5. Now T-stop, we should know, but if you don't know, T-stop is the actual amount of transmitted light going into the sensor. So if you go a T2.1 and another lens has T2.1, you know the exact same amount of light that's going into the sensor. 
On a professional set, this is extremely crucial because if you have set all these lights to be the exact same and you've got the same amount of light that's going into the sensor, nothing's changing, you don't have to change that exposure. But if you're switching from a T2.1 to a T2.5 with that 16 millimeter lens, you know that there's going to be a different amount of light. So you would most likely crank up a lot of the lights, the ambient light, the key light, some of the uh, reflections, all those kind of things, you need to take that in consideration. And having that value there is going to give you an accurate representation. Because if you have an f-stop lens, let's say an f1.8, the T value is going to be a lot slower because you're gonna be losing a lot of light due to diffractions and uh, just the lens elements pretty much shooting light in different directions. You're not gonna be getting exactly f1.8 at the back. It'll be probably, a T1.9, T2, T2.1, something like that, depending on manufacturers. Secondly, it's gonna come down to the focusing. Now this one, or the, I think a lot of the Makey ones, they have 330 degree focus throw. That is massive. If you really want to dial in your focus, having a bigger focus throw is going to help you do that a lot more accurately. And if you have a short focus throw, you know, that's not gonna give you as accurate results because there's just not enough room to play. This one, you can dial it in very slow to get the perfect amount of focus and cinematographers absolutely love, well, first ACs will absolutely love this, specifically if you are shooting wide open at T2.1. Now that brings me to my next point, is having a first AC. Now I know a lot of sets, uh, professional sets, will have a first AC and a camera op or a cinematographer DOP. It really depends on how the set works and how many people you've got working on your set. If you are a sole videographer, you will most likely be using a focus motor by yourself. But that is a very interesting thing because you're going to need to pair this with obviously a desired focus motor. Tilta Nucleus Nano, uh, Axoon just brought their newest one out, the FC01, which they're all very good focus motors, but these are designed very well to be on set and uh, be you know controlled manually with a focus motor. They're not really designed to be focused with your hand. And if you are focusing with your hand, there's absolutely no problems with that. If you're comfortable with doing that, absolutely keep doing it, it's perfectly fine. But focus motors will actually give you a little bit more control because you can you know, dial it in a little bit faster so the focus motor can go faster, you can dial it in slower, you can set A and B points which could be very important when it comes to uh, moving subjects or cinematographer will go from subject here, go over to distance and you wanna be able to hit that absolutely accurately. You can set focus, come over here, set focus and then you literally just focus and it's easy. Setting A and B points is pretty awesome when it comes to uh, focusing and being a first AC. So one of the key differences between using an alpha camera and the FX6 is that ND filter. And uh, if you don't have drop-in ND filters, you're going to have an issue because I've got the Tilter Mirage system which has a drop-in ND filter, but this matte box here is too close, it, you're gonna see some hectic vignetting, whereas this is a small rig matte box and this one is wide enough for that 16 millimeters because 16 millimeters is crazy wide. And if you don't have an 86 millimeter front filter thread on your ND filters, you're not gonna be able to have an ND filter, you're not gonna be able to have you know twice your shutter speed for your frame rate. So you're gonna have some issues, but uh, wide establishing shots, can you just crank the shutter and get away with it? That is a big question. It really depends on moving subjects. What's in the foreground, what's in the background? Do you need that motion blur? That is a key difference. But if you do have moving subjects, you're going to need a big enough ND filter. That's probably where you would need a cinema camera with built-in ND filter systems. Now, when it comes to actually utilizing these lenses in terms of field of view and perspective, this is where things differ. Obviously, 16 millimeters is a really wide lens. It's great for establishing shots, but it's also nice to get close to the subject and also push the background away so you still actually see a lot more of the background. Look here at the 24 millimeters and the 50 
and the 105 millimeters. You can see the perspective change, even though the subject stays the same size in the frame, the background is pushed away or compressed depending on which focal length you actually choose. Obviously, the 105 millimeters, you can see the background is completely compressed, brings it all in. You can't see much of the full surroundings. So essentially, you're focused directly on the subject. Whereas this wide angle lens at 16 millimeters, you can see there's so much more of the background. So if there is a really nice grand location, you may want to show that more. The 16 millimeter one is the way to go. But you have to be aware that obviously this is going to change the shape of people's faces. So when it comes to 16 millimeters, it's really going to distort faces and obviously make them appear quite unusual. This is where your 35 or 50 millimeter lens is going to be the best because it's the most natural and pleasing looking focal length when it comes to faces. Sometimes 85 and 105 is still perfectly fine as well. So when it comes to image quality with all the Makey lenses, they are absolutely phenomenal. They're always tack sharp from center to edge, high contrast. The image quality is just astonishing. The chromatic aberration is extremely low. The ghosting is handled very well. It depends on which model you go for. The ghosting is a little bit different between each lenses. I've only got four of the five full frame. I don't have the 85. I've got the 16, the 24, the 50, and the 105. I think there's a 135 coming as well, but uh, hopefully I can get my hands on that one because that one will be very interesting. I absolutely love the 105, but a 135? Whew, that's gonna be so good. Now, if you are worried about the amount of weight you're actually putting on the E-mount or RF mount, whichever mount you're gonna be buying this for, it does come with a lens support bracket as well. So it comes in the box, you just need to attach it, and then you can obviously have your own lens mount support and just mount it there. But it really depends on how you actually wanna be setting this up, but that does help, especially if you do have a heavy mat box on the end, it could actually put some stress on that mount, and uh, having a lens support is really good that it's actually included inside the box. You don't have to buy a full ring and put a you know lens collar on there or anything like that. Now, when it comes to the bokeh quality, I don't think you're going to be unimpressed with the bokeh quality. It's nice and smooth. Sure, it does get a little bit cat eye-ish in the corners, but it's nice and clean. There is no weird looking distracting bokeh. It's really subjective. It depends on what you actually prefer. Some people prefer character in the bokeh. Some people prefer, prefer cleaner bokeh. It really depends and you shouldn't really be worried about the type of bokeh anyway. Overall, my conclusion is that this lens obviously is fabulous. It's just like all the other lenses that they've got in the full frame range. I haven't tested the APC range, but if you do wanna see the APS-C range, check out Andrew Murphy's channel. The link will be in the description below. He's got all the Canon EF APS-C versions, but this full frame, in terms of quality, in terms of value, in terms of the sharpness and image, you get out of this thing, you can't go wrong. It's absolutely incredible. If you're doing high-end commercial work, if you're doing low-end commercial work, if you're doing real estate, anything that you need a wide angle shot, this one is your go. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That'd be absolutely amazing. If you are still here at the end of this video, uh, link will be in the description below if you do wanna check out my LUTs, if you wanna support my channel. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking around if you're here. All right, let's get it.